All right, welcome friends and family to episode four. Actually, who am I kidding? None of my family is actually listening to this. No, my stupid brothers won't listen to it. Oh God, if we can't get our family to listen to this, what's the point? Anyway, let's uh, keep going. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, uh, welcome to episode four of The End of Everything, um, a weekly podcast where we explore the latest technology, trends and changes in this digital age. And today we're asking the question, is this the end of NASA? Or as I like to call it, the National Aeronautics Space Administration. Yeah. Oh, and this is... And it's a big, it's a more branching than NASA, maybe we're talking about state state run or government run space agencies sure sure absolutely for those people who are really hung up on the details yeah and uh speaking of <laughs> hung up on the details you and gray everybody <laughs> the reason that i might want to make a podcast is so i could talk about this specific topic and it's finally got to episode four where he's got his opportunity <laughs> yeah. um so i'm going to take a little bit of a back step this episode <laughs> yeah um we have yeah the probably the uh, biggest space nerd in the Wellington region with us today. Yeah. Um, so I'll just be asking a few questions and making sure he doesn't ramble on too much. Yeah. However, he does know his stuff. Um, Jeez, he made me start a for I'm definitely not an expert. Ah, uh, he's talking himself down. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yeah. um, so a- again, we'll probably just talk a little bit about uh, the past. So yeah. um, we'll talk a little bit about the history of NASA and the sort of state-run agencies. Um, a little bit what's happening today and where it may go in the future. Yeah. Um, so, uh, take it away, Ewan. <laughs> so, I guess the best place to start for history is like, um, you know... Making it to the moon, maybe. Making it to the moon, yeah. Like the, obviously, it was like started as a competition between them, not just as a competition between America mm. and Russia. So, um, after the Second World War, like a lot of all the... You know, a lot of the people who found it, especially NASA, were like Nazis rocket engineers mm-hmm. so they oh they were good though <laughs> they were well they, they made the V2 which I think was the first um, intercontinental ballistic missile yeah or like it was the first thing to become this might be wrong like uh, you know get out of Earth's atmosphere or whatever mm-hmm. become like mm-hmm. a space space fearing rocket yeah I don't know what the technical word is but yeah so like um, they obviously had like the the, the, NASA, mm-hmm. the Nazi engineers were the best in the world so they kind of like divvied them up between America and um, the USSR, mm. so from that then like emerged the obviously the Cold War and then the space race and all the rest of it. Mm. And it was a space race. It was, it was kind of a national pride level, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. I mean, also you know they wanted to be able to send like as you say into continent. They wanted to be able to bomb each other, mm. and so like who's got the biggest stick kind of thing. Yes. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Who's got the biggest? Uh, or the largest mutually assured destruction. Or yeah, or like yeah. spy technology as well, like sure. Sputnik and all those sort of things. Mm, mm. But, you know, so obviously traditionally you have to fly a plane over someone to be able to see what they're up to, but obviously with satellites, yeah. massive advantage to be able to see what the other country is developing. Mm. Um, and it's also the biggest race to uh, have the coolest name for someone who goes into space. Um, person. Yeah, whether it be astronaut or cosmonaut. Yeah. And, I mean, that debate still rages on today. Yeah, they have, like, it's funny, like, even, like, Japan, like, they're, they're called Taikonauts in Japan. Taikonauts? Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I don't know what that is. But I don't know um, what, if they have... I wonder what they actually... Obviously, they're not called that in Japanese. I assume cosmonauts aren't called that. In, maybe they are called cosmonauts in Russian. I don't know. Could be. Well, don't yeah, know. actually, true. Maybe that is the American name for it. What would, yeah. we, what would uh, the first New Zealand noughts be? Astronaut. Key yeah. nought. Keep it <laughs> Yeah, I don't like that. Yeah, but actually speaking of... I mean, I don't know if you're going to but maybe we are. But yeah, New Zealand has a space agency for the first time, which is Rocket Lab. Yeah. And, um, they're doing some pretty amazing stuff. But anyway, that's, that's maybe pretty a little cool. But um, yeah, so I guess from... So landing on the moon. Landing on the moon was a big thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they won. But actually, like, Russia won a lot of the first. You know, they put the first person to put a man into, yep. into space and they um, were the first... I think they're the first person to put something like into orbit, which was Sputnik, I'm pretty sure. Mm. And then um, they were developing this like so the the um, Saturn V was the rocket which took man to the moon. Yep. So it's the most powerful rocket that's ever flown, even today. So I mean, like it's it's pretty crazy that that is the case. Mm. But anyway, Russia was developing their own Saturn V, and it is the most bizarre looking thing ever. Like <laughs> it's just like a giant 
road car and all that. <laughs> yeah. But like, just obviously, as big as a skyscraper, with just like a shit ton of rockets on the bottom of it. And <laughs> it's just like, like it looks like a cartoon. It's actually <laughs> so bizarre. And I think they launched it once, but it just goes, like it's about 100 feet off the ground and just explodes. <laughs> <laughs> like, it such a so that, that was going to be their attempt to get That was to their attempt to get to the moon. Right, okay. But like, it's just that classic, I mean, it kind of reminded me a bit of the Chernobyl Mm. And it's that same sort of thing <laughs> where it's like, um, you know, and like the Americans over engineer everything and think it down to the minute detail. So the example they use is like a ballpoint pen. So yeah, like, yeah, like the yeah, Americans yeah, spent sure. like a million dollars and however long like developing a ballpoint pen, but then the Russians used like a pencil. Yeah. But then they were saying that like the pencil's great and almost as good, but the pencil like creates graphite shavings yeah. as you're writing and then they like build up and can affect like the, um, electronics and stuff like that because yep. they like cluster into areas and make things short out so that, anyway yeah. like, it's like cutting those corners which like oh yeah it seems like a great idea but that, yeah that, I mean whether that is an urban myth or not because I've heard that quite a bit but yeah. um, it is the best analogy isn't it like short to the point don't actually need to spend millions on developing yeah. it but maybe there are some long term ramifications here that we're not actually addressing even the um, so the, the like now that the shuttle's retired like so basically everyone to get to the international space station has to use a Soyuz rocket which is a Russian rocket mm. so this is a re- like maybe this brings it into the present in a quite a good way that's the reason that like America wanted to develop private enterprises to take them to the moon and um, take them to the international space station because at the moment they're reliant on Russia mm-hmm. so obviously mm-hmm. as tensions rise and things like that it's not ideal to have your only ticket be the Russian ticket and obviously yep. they can they charge an exorbitant amount because they can yep. and anyway the Soyuz rocket like still uses like a fuse to like light the engines so like so someone with a little uh, light it's like kind of, yeah I mean like it's, it's obviously a glorified fuse but it's like super simple basically like it's yeah. launched like the way in which they ignite the engines is still super simple compared to like these yep. you know new rockets that you have so it's still it's crazy that but you know yeah. it's a great rocket and it does the job and it's been doing the job for like extremely 50 years reliable. extremely reliably for like such yeah. a long time so I think there is something to be said for like for Russian engineering keeping things simple yeah yeah that is interesting yeah because I, I guess um, before we jump into the present day maybe we want to talk a little bit about the um, what was like people's enthusiasm for space mm-hmm. yeah, uh, yeah. back in the uh, back when we did the moon landing and things like that. I mean that was like the biggest thing of the, the yeah. year like, of, that was the biggest moment of the decade right man has reached another celestial body yeah exactly um, and like I mean, were people excited about space back then I mean I, I don't know much about the landscape or whether it's looking in hindsight it's been over exaggerated but I mean this obviously was the focus for a lot of yeah. nations and people right yeah well I think it's hard for us to say because obviously we're, we weren't alive <laughs> speak crazy enough. Enough. No, you're right. but you know like, actually it was a, I don't know if people were aware but the other day it was the 50th anniversary of landing yep. on the moon so yeah it's been about 50 years and uh, yeah I mean obviously there was a lot of hype I mean how much public will do you need to you know the, I don't know if you watched that mm. Ryan what the recent film mm, that came out First Man or something yeah no. like you know like these test piles were just dying left right and center mm. and they were just throwing millions and millions of dollars and lives at trying to get to the moon so i mean mm. anything you know if you imagine going you know vietnam war or iraq war like you need public will behind you to do these things that are like ridiculously hard so obviously there must have been like a lot of interest yeah. in that in doing that and i know? guess public will means money right because yeah. i mean the, it, was, it was extremely expensive yeah. at the time wasn't it like it, to the point where they've struggled to raise the funds to do anything like yeah, that. I don't think like that. Is it ever, true? ever it's, you know, after that, mm. that this, whatever, the 60s moment was happening, like, NASA's budget's never been as a significant part of the GDP of America since right, that, those yeah. times, you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Like, it was like a lot of, like, a significant percentage of the, the, of the government spending was, like, doing that, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? So it was really important, but now, but you, there's no way people wouldn't vote for it, you know what I mean? They, they can't justify that level of spending. Like, a lot of, I think, like, people now are very much like, oh, we've got so many problems on Earth, but like, we need to fix all our Earth problems yeah. before we go and spend money on space. And I think people are yep. very dismissive of it. But, like, you know, NASA, so many technologies are, are like, only here mm. because mm. NASA's created them, you know what I mean? And I think, um, yeah, you're right. I mean, it, it's created so many uh, engineering marvels that have just sparked so many other industries yeah like down to like you know fabrics and yeah. you know well I think and what is it that um 
CAT scan, not CAT scan, you know, like the, the like MRI. MRI, that's yeah. the famous one they say that like NASA, you know, developed develop that technology. I don't know why, but that wouldn't be yeah. without them, you know what I mean? But again, like, I mean, talking about the the original moon landing, I think in that, um, in the moon landed, there was the co- uh, relative computing power to an iPhone, yeah. or an iPhone has more computing power than yeah, that does now. I mean, it's like, yeah, ridiculously dull. So, yeah, I mean, it's pretty pretty amazing looking back on what that achieved you know um yeah and i guess what that means is that eventually there'll be an app that can take us to the moon yeah. since our phones are all as powerful as the moon landing i mean that's what i took from it yeah basically you just strap a little rocket to your phone and i just ride think it. so yeah yeah <laughs> um yeah again well, hopefully, not sure hopefully old musky is like only if maybe in yeah. Well, musky time, like probably ten years, I'll have iPhones that can sort of teleport us to the moon. Surely, I would think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That sounds as good as wheelhouse. Now, <laughs> uh, when we're talking about old musky, <laughs> we are talking about Elon Musk um, and the man, um, the legend. The le- <laughs> yeah, uh, we, instead of a um, painted portrait of Jesus, we actually have a painted portrait of Elon Musk yeah. in our office um, that we worship to daily. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, that, yeah incredible. Uh, incredibly uh, entrepreneurial I suppose yeah I mean like he's obviously super he's in the public limelight isn't he he's one of those like eccentric billionaires yeah or like um, entrepreneur magnate kind of people like mm. uh, you know I think Jeff Bezos and you know all these people what's his name from Virgin mm-hmm. uh, Richard Branson Richard Branson yeah always kind of like eccentric yeah uh, we do love them but yeah uh, perhaps that's a good little segue into the, uh, the, the current landscape so NASA yeah. had this massive uh, ball of hype around the moon landing, um, and it's never had that hype since. Yeah. Well, I think I mean, to be fair, you can know about the International Space Station is another like yeah, sure. I think thing that you could probably pick up jump to is after the after the moon landing. Obviously, that was like a massive thing, and it's like it's crazy how mm. impressive that is. Like, it's like, I think it's like as big as a football field, like this this huge satellite in the sky that obviously heaps of different nations send their you know astronauts mm. to, and it's like a great thing in the sort of the best you know of like collaboration in space and like all that sort mm, of thing like mm. peaceful space and obviously to get Russia and America to agree to like build this thing together you know it's like pretty impressive you know <laughs> yeah. and like the space shuttle was another big part of that and like I you know watching all those YouTube, like YouTube videos and stuff that I watched like people said that there was a lot of hype around the you know the space shuttle as well like that was mm, another thing mm. where it was like this is amazing like America is achieve this thing and like this is an amazing space vehicle you know like yeah. it's like a you know we were pretty young when that was flying so I don't really remember ever seeing it no watching I, it. I remember just uh, seeing it and accepting it as a thing yeah like, I never really appreciated it but obviously there was a, you know the disaster you know when it mm. blew up so like obviously that was and I think people you know not that there's a flawed design but it's a very complicated design and um a lot of things could go wrong yeah I think so yeah. I don't know but again it's amazing like you you know it's this plane which goes into space carrying like a school bus worth of stuff yeah. with ten, seven people or something and then flies back and lands on earth like yeah. if that exi- if someone had that tomorrow like you'd be like shit that's impressive like yeah. we don't have anything like that at the moment yeah you know so and is that like it was pretty much discontinued because of the accident well, I think as well there was no need for it because the International Space Station was made. Yeah. And like, so right. a lot of what it was for was to like transport like sections of it up there so they could then like dock it all together and work on it. I see. And then come back. But like now, no one's building anything like that. Yep. You know. So how, how do people travel up to the International Space Station? On that now? Soyuz. So that's what it was on about. Ah. Uh, that Russian. It's a Russian rocket. I see. I it's see. just a little capsule. So like basically it's not been changed since the 60s, you know, or yep. whatever, 80s. I don't know. It's old. So people say it's like you know, you just cram this little thing and just shot up. Shot up. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I think, maybe on Gravity, I don't know if they ever know on Gravity. Gravity's are pretty good, I think, in terms of like, showing you maybe like, mm. I mean, I'm not an astronaut, so I don't know. But, yeah, no, no. <laughs> All right. Like, how like, kind of, man, it would be, like, it's yeah. insane that people do that. The, the scale and, and the, uh... the speed and the like, yeah. forces involved. Like, yeah. it's just like, you know, and on a plane, you're like, oh, shit, it's shaking a bit. Like, this is a bit scary. Yeah. Like, you're literally just on top of a massive controlled explosion and just being little, shot into space. And a little, little um, toaster. You just, yeah. like, to chucked up and into space. Back, and you're just like, in this little ball. And it's like, probably a foot away. It's just, like, plasma. Or something. Yeah. Like, you know? <laughs> yeah, sure. 
and it seems so crude when you put it like that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it is just like a little um, firework that they're just sending <laughs> up. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it's, it, it does blow my mind. I think actually, like, you know, SpaceX has started... So, yeah, my SpaceX is... Elon Musk's company is SpaceX. So, again, yeah, let's go to the present, I guess. Yes, yeah. So, NASA started maybe, like, trying to release commercial contracts to, like encourage a private space economy yep so like they saw it as they were gonna partner with com- aerospace companies in america to like develop you know rockets mainly but mm. you know mm. capsules and all sorts of different things that they feel like they could more cheaply get outsourced to private companies to like to do the things that they you know, run of the mill things like launching people to the International Space Station and mm. launching cargo to the International Space Station is stuff that, like, I guess NASA decided that they didn't think was the best use of, you know, money because obviously, like, private private enterprises do things more efficiently. They find efficiencies and there's yeah. competitive, you know, sure. things to make you know make it cheaper and faster and all the rest of it. So, so yeah, like commercial companies develop just a lot faster than these government. Yeah. Agencies. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So there's a, been a, like a whole bunch of companies in America that have just, like, sprung up from that. But I mean, the big like big ones that have been doing it for a long time is Boeing and... Um, what are they called? I don't know. Boeing's one of them. And they like... Um, they work... They, they develop... They've been working with them for ages. Like, so big like companies in America, like aerospace companies in America, like... NASA would outsource stuff to them mm. to like build their rockets but anyway another th- another bunch of small startup companies have been started so SpaceX is one of those and like Blue Origin is another one which is owned by Jeff Bezos right and there are other smaller ones but they're the two like prominent ones in the public eye I guess so anyway these companies have been like tasked to develop cheaper me- methods of getting to the International Space Station so the yeah, I don't know where that leads me. But, um... Well, uh, yeah, I mean, so uh, NASA's basically outsourced uh, a lot of the tasks that it doesn't deem important. Um, yeah. SpaceX and other companies have jumped on that. And what you're starting to get is a, sort of an industry yeah. building uh, around this. So you've almost got this government agency at, um, at the centre of things, but you've got these private companies yeah. building their own sort of systems around it yeah I, I, yeah to service NASA but not only NASA they service like um, you know satellite companies is the main mm-hmm. one so like obviously all these telecommunication networks around the world need to launch these satellites to you know increase coverage and all the rest of it so that's like majority of what SpaceX does is launch sort of private satellites and I suppose with um I mean, yeah, so SpaceX being one of the main ones, was it, um, apart from PayPal, this was one of Elon's first... Yeah, that and Tesla, I think. Tesla was... Yeah, started at a similar time. Roughly similar time, yeah. And with a lot of his companies, they do have uh, an overarching goal, isn't it? Yeah. Which is, I mean, doesn't Elon just want to go get to Mars? Yeah, but actually in recent, last couple of years, he sort of said that maybe he wants to go to the moon first now or something, but I think it's probably like... Mars is so far away. Yeah. Like, it's just, and obviously we haven't been to the moon in 50 years, so like, it's probably a bit easier to, to sort of yeah. aim at that first, but I suppose it's just like typical, that kind of person where you're like, oh, we'll just go to Mars. It's like, the heaviest thing ever landed on Mars is the Mars Curiosity rover, yep. which weighs a ton. And like, to support a human on Mars, you know, yeah, is... The amount of things you'd need. You need like, you know, you know 100 tons or something, you're like, yeah. whatever, to like... You, because you have to whatever you land there like if it's a person has to come back again yeah so you need to land something that can then take off and come all the way home again yeah you know so like it's just so far at far outside the realms of possibility like so i mean yeah elon musk in particular and same with blue origin and a lot of these companies are really focusing on like lowering the cost of like ticket to orbit so like the because at the moment all rockets well, not at the moment because of SpaceX has sort of changed that, but up until the last five years ago, whenever they've landed it, you know, every rocket was basically just thrown away as it, as it, mm. to get anything into space, you just have like a big stack of rockets that fall off like in stages, they're called. Yep. So they get smaller and smaller as you get higher and higher, so they're not carrying all that dead weight with them. 
and all those bits just fall into the ocean or whatever and explode. Yep. So that you're only left with this tiny little capsule of stuff or satellite that's in orbit. So the price is you have to build that whole rocket every time to get that little thing into space. So that's when you see the when you see the moon lander or whatever it is that's basically the top of that yeah. massive stack of exactly. rockets isn't it so the big thing that leaves earth with all the girders <laughs> and um, support structure that just gets sort of thrown into the ocean and you're left with just a little bit at the top yeah i mean most of it you know the first stage is like 80 percent of the mass or 90 percent of the mass and then yeah it's like on on board for like two minutes and i guess because it's all the fuel and yeah stuff, isn't it? it's just fuel it's just fuel yeah and obviously like the further away you get the less fuel you need, you know. Yeah, the yeah. gravity's weaker. There's less air, like there's less um resistance. Yeah, from you air. do know your stuff, you know. Yeah, interesting. Yep. So like, anyway, SpaceX has, you know, it's actually pretty revolutionary what they've done because mm. like, the space shuttle was an attempt at reusability. So like, you did reuse this the shuttle, but like obviously all those like tanks and everything. Yeah, I think they actually fell into the ocean. They fished them out of the ocean and they cleaned them. Yeah, but so it for parts. <laughs> the goal was to make a reusable space vehicle, but yep. you know it actually ended up just being like, you know, a billion dollars to launch each time or something. Yeah, yep. But like, SpaceX have made a reusable first stage, so it's the part again. It's the first bit which falls off, so yep. that lands again either on a barge or on, on land, and then you fill it up again and go again. So their their whole goal is to like make it so you can. It's like an aeroplane that you just kind of get on and go. Yeah, wow. And obviously that they are like they're making strides towards that, like because it's just yeah, it's in, for anyone anyone interested, you should watch some SpaceX like live streams because they are really quite mind blowing. You know, mm. especially the Falcon Heavy, which is a big their biggest rocket and um has two like so it's three central cores and two fall off the side and both the two like fly back to land and land and then the first one the middle one keeps going and then that like breaks off and lands on a barge. I think it actually hasn't achieved that. It keeps crashing <laughs> yeah. into the sea. Hey, early but days, early days. That's the goal. So, like, you know, like 90% of the rocket is, like, reused and filled up again. But it, it is crazy watching these things because you're essentially seeing, like, a traditional rocket, you know, the fire at the bottom, big stick on top. Somehow it orients it itself back down to land just like it was on the ground. Yeah. And it, it seems to defy physics a little bit. Yeah. It, it, it is bizarre how how they achieve that yeah definitely and I think that maybe we so I think uh, with all these incredible advancements and like these in the, these videos on YouTube and things again like I think this is a little bit of the goal of SpaceX and yeah. Elon Musk is actually to grow this hype again yeah right? exactly this uh, the same sort of hype that got us to the moon originally mm. I mean this is the idea that people are getting excited about space again yeah and starting to look outwards beyond their planet you know exactly. is the the kind of overarching goal here isn't it yeah and I think as much as people like bag on him or people like him it's like you know yeah I think he goes about things in the wrong way sometimes but at the same time like you can't deny the fact that he does create a hype like kind of no one else in a way mm. like same with Tesla you know people are just obsessed with Tesla yeah, and like there's not many companies like I think Apple probably you know especially in the heyday would have had that same obsession where people yeah. were like gotta have Apple iPhone and it's like you know some sort of it's, culture yeah around culture it. around it which is really hard to put and like that's those kind of people and things you need to achieve these you know yeah. whatever crazy things but at the same time like, I remember actually one of my friends an Irish friend he was saying that like um, it is kind of sad that now we look to these like messiah like people like Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos to solve our problems and do things that no one else can do because like you are you know he it, it's just like it's the kind of philanthropy like he think he is amazing and like you know God to people and mm. like I don't really you know it'd be better if like you know it'd be better if NASA was doing it in a way because you know that's like the whole of America like everyone in America owns a bit of that dream and sure. is like committing to it and like you know if Elon Musk gets and lands the thing on the moon it's gonna be like whoa look how amazing Elon Musk is yeah but yep. like if America, NASA does it and America does it like that's like fuck yeah like America's still killing it you know like they're still yeah. think like well I mean it's the patriotism is yeah. the difference isn't it like having a national pride over doing something versus oh big companies don't yeah cool. and it's like so I think so that's why I think that, like, you know, NASA is still really important. And obviously, like... But maybe that, I mean, looking at back of the moon landing, I mean, that was 
it was the nation's achievement yeah in a lot of ways wasn't it like i mean there was just such uh, universal pride over that of like look at what we've done yeah. and like you say like, the, you know the amount of money that was poured into it and people's lives that were like you know <laughs> <laughs> sacrificed for it almost yeah. you know um, yeah I mean I guess with private industries and like these eccentric billionaires we might have lost that yeah perhaps I think so I mean I think that's the thing like probably brings us to like is NASA dead or whatever which is obviously like an exaggerated phrase like NASA isn't super important now and mm. SpaceX and none of these people would exist without NASA I was saying to Ben it's like you know all these people have you know every time Elon Musk gets asked about anything it's like we would not be here without NASA NASA is the you know cornerstone or whatever like they just can just such a hive of like you know intelligence and knowledge about all this stuff like you know you, you wouldn't have the people to do any of this stuff without it you wouldn't have the money like they fund it largely all yeah. these companies are like win contracts from NASA and they just get paid billions of dollars to develop these rockets so yeah I think but I think NASA like moving away from doing things such as like launching things and yeah because at the moment NASA's also developing like a really powerful rocket called the SLS which has like been in development for you know 10 I don't know how many years many years over administrations so this is the problem is that right. NASA will develop things and then a new administration will come in and say, we're not doing that anymore. Or we're cutting funding for this. Yeah. Thing. And it's all just too politically, there's too much political like control over it. The engineers don't really, can't make decisions like, oh, this is the most efficient way to get to the moon. It's like, oh, but we wanted to build this part of the rocket is built in my state. So I want to, yeah. Like, um, I want to see results on this thing. Yeah. During my term. Yeah. yeah. And I want to like, what's it called? Lobby. They want to, they lobby to get parts made in their state because it obviously boosts heaps of jobs. So like you end up getting this like you know the SLS is built out of like parts from all over the country and it's really expensive basically. Like they estimate it's going to be over a billion dollars to launch each one and that that's not including the launch the development cost which they've been as I say have been developing for like over eight wow. years at a billion a billion dollars a year or have much of money they spend on it. But like SpaceX is able to launch the Falcon Heavy is like a the most powerful rocket that's like currently. currently available and that's the SpaceX rocket, rocket that I was talking about before and that's like not quite as powerful but like maybe 70% as powerful and it like costs like $130 million or whatever to launch so like 10 Ch times cheaper Ch way change. cheaper Ch way change, cheaper but yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like I think that's the argument or like I've heard a few people sort of add that idea is that like you use private business to yeah you drive you know do all innovation. the launching innovation do things cheaper but then you use NASA to like get the first man there like develop the capsules like make all these telescopes like Hubble like you know we yeah. wouldn't Hubble without NASA you know all these things that are like need to be done but there's no real like economic drive for them like sure. if you're like oh we want to go to um, Europa and like go into under the ice and see if there's a life there like that's going to be one of the most not important things in the world but like to answer whether or not we're alone in the universe or our, you know, our solar system. Pretty important, in my opinion. Yeah. But, you know, if you said to a businessman, like, I'm going to find life, and they go, I don't, how am I going to make a return on that? Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. Know? What's my annual return? Yeah, what's my... So, like, I think that's yeah the way it is going, and I think, yeah, I, I don't know, who knows if that happened, but NASA have plans at the moment to go back to the moon, and, like, you know, obviously Trump, like, is going to be braggadocious about everything and be mm. like mm. we're going at the moon we're gonna it's gonna be awesome it's gonna be amazing like we're awesome i'm awesome but um it seems like they are actually putting like significant resources into like going back to the moon on a semi-permanent basis like actually to building a base and stuff because I, I was looking into uh was it fusion and fission as far as like nuclear power goes yeah and how uh fusion which i think fusion is the one that's like, we haven't achieved yet right yeah i think so yeah um, so yeah to achieve fusion which is you know this also su ultimately sustainable source of energy how um, the sun works yeah how the sun works exactly <laughs> um, basically they need like hydrogen 3 right which is um, and there's a you know um, a handbag's worth of like, of hydrogen 3 on earth but there's a lot on the moon right. um, and that's you know so one um, commercial reason for actually going to the moon might actually be get this hydrogen three yeah. to to do like all these various um, fusion technologies that might actually 
come out of that. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm basically what I'm saying is like, like there's that's a commercial advantage or a commercial incentive to actually leave our planet. And yeah. that, that's the sort of thing we need to spark that innovation and yeah. like get out of there. Unfortunately, you know, um, or else the the money just probably it's hard to get or yeah. you, you rely on the, on those government agencies to kind of fund a lot of this. Yeah, it's like how do you sort of leverage capitalism to your advantage to like Yeah. Yeah. I mean another one is like asteroid mining. So like we're on mm. the very early stages of that, you know, people they've they've tried landing rovers on asteroids and they've had things that orbit asteroids and you know they're starting to study them and like mm. trying to understand how they could potentially like um mine them but you know again they're like there's asteroids out there which have like as much raw you know minerals on it as like you know whatever like just heaps of gold that you basically just grab off the asteroid yeah, yeah. I don't know that's obviously a massive simplification it just takes their shopping trolleys and <laughs> but, you know yeah. like or like heavy metals for like you know smartphones or whatever but like, it's all obviously not all it's a super controversial where it's mined and it's come from, you know yeah <laughs> dug up by poor people in you know Africa or whatever and who are just like you know and then that's how we do all our tech so you know maybe we could source it in different ways but again that's like this is probably moving into future right it's like pretty far future sort of things yeah. but um, the, the, I guess the idea as I say to bring it back to like yeah, SpaceX and, and Blue Origin is like they see the, the, the thing that's holding us back is the launch cost so if mm. they can like lower the cost of launch by you know what's he say a magnitude of ten or something so like a hundred times or whatever then like the all these opportunities become a lot more economically viable. Yeah, certainly it's that much easier to send stuff into space. Yeah, so oh, it's exciting times for yeah. sure because like um yeah again like <laughs> it's probably just gonna harp on that SpaceX podcast but you know they're developing a new rocket at the moment so like. When they were developing the Falcon 9, they had like a, a test vehicle. They got like basically they started with the big, this is just like a, like a big fuel tank with a rocket on the bottom. Yep. And they would like hover like a little bit and then land. Yep. And then it would hover a bit higher and then land. And then obviously you work your way up until you launch it into space and get it to land again. Yep. So I mean, it's impressive to see like all those like iterations, iterations and yeah. just failing, 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 failing. And then eventually it's like, oh shit, this thing's actually worked. But anyway, they're in the, the very early stages again of like developing the same technology but basically upscaling it. Mm-hmm. And this this is gonna be the vehicle that they send to the you know, Elon Musk sends to wants to send to the moon and Mars basically. So it's gonna be like the the first like space freighter, I guess. Ooh, so, yeah. You know, so it's like getting like this the I mean that's what was exciting about, it, you know, it's painting these sort of images of like this is like science fiction stuff, you know what I mean? So like yep. you know, he wants to basically make a, just an upscale version of a thing that you kind of can it's gonna be in two stages again, so two parts. Yeah. And it's like um the bottom part will land like the one at the moment does, but just at way bigger scale. And then the top part will be like a bit more like the space shuttle in the way that it's sort of like a big, ve- you know, a big vehicle, which can then do things in space like um, land on the moon. If it, land on the moon, you know, release satellites into orbit, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Right. And then land, and then the whole thing, the whole system is reusable. Yeah. So, wow. And then like you know, you fuel up and do it again or whatever. But then, because at the moment there's still like you know parts of the rocket which are which are which are thrown away. Yep. Yep. In the in the like um configuration that at the moment they are in at the moment. So is that is that more or less uh, where things are heading with there's like these space freighters and uh, I guess um, when am I going to be able to go to space? Actually, so like um, Jeff Bezos, who's yeah. Blue Origin, but he also owns okay. Amazon. That's how he made richest man in the world. Um, actually, he just got divorced and he had to split his money with his wife. So I'm not sure if he still is. Oh, his wife is <laughs> pretty well off. She's like the third richest person in the world now, or like third richest woman or something. Nice. Um, but he, they have a, a very a small. Like, obviously, they're just like that's the thing which is a bit like gross about. It. It's obviously just like a dick measuring contest between Elon <laughs> Musk and Jeff Bezos. Like literally, like who's got the biggest rocket? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, like their rocket that they've got at the moment is called New Shepard, and it like is a mini version of the Falcon Nine. So basically, like it has a single stage which launches up and it releases a capsule, mm. but it doesn't go. It doesn't launch things into orbit like the SpaceX one does. It just launches things really high, I guess. Yeah. But it's technically into space. There's a special, like, it's like the something line. There's a space in the right. line. Right, yeah, It's yeah. like, I don't know, 60 miles or something into the sky. Anyway, so they're planning on launching. This is for space tourism. So, like, basically, you mm. get, you're gonna, if you're in that capsule, you go above, you go into space, 
Yeah. But you like only are above in space for like a, a, a few minutes. You get to be in zero gravity. You get to see the like overshadow effect they call it or something, which is basically like you can kind of see the horizon, like you see yeah, the Earth see as the a whole curvature. And, yeah. yeah, yeah. So like you kind of get that, and then you you come back down again, and like it's supposed to only be like only I don't know one hundred fifty thousand dollars a ticket or something. Cheap. I think yeah. it was something like that. I, I might be wrong, but and also like um, Richard Branson with the with the is doing his one as well, mm. which is a similar sort of thing, just in a different way. It's like a big plane. It just gets real high for a bit, and, and then, then like it drops. drops a rocket, and then the rocket like boosts off further. Yeah, you right. get a similar sort of effect. Gotcha. But that's had issues. Like they've been like he's been like next year you're gonna be able to do it, and then and that was like five years ago. Yeah. So. I think a test pilot died recently in it like it just yeah exploded so like this stuff's obviously still super dangerous and that's the thing is like um you know the technology's obviously getting better and all the rest of it but like it's still such early days it's like early days of space of aircraft travel like people will die all the time yeah like my brothers or whatever like I'm sure planes are just like oh we fell off on you know what I mean <laughs> oh shit you know yeah. and like so I like I don't like flying that much, so I don't think I'd be super keen on getting into a rocket, you know, just yet. Sure, <laughs> sure. Even though like it's like it should be right. It's like yeah, but like just the, as again like back to the forces and the physics of everything. Like you just mm. you have to go so fast and so like everything just has to be right. Otherwise, it just seems so unnatural. Doesn't yeah, it? yeah. Like chuck your chuck someone in a tin can, <laughs> put a rocket underneath them, yeah. <laughs> so like, fling them up. <laughs> yeah, this is another one, like the SpaceX. So like with the same rocket that I was describing earlier, the really big new one that newly developing, like his potential idea of it is that you would use this to like get around the earth so like like a plane like a plane but real quick <laughs> yeah so basically you just hop on this because he's, he's saying that the rocket will become cheap enough because it's fully reusable but it's only the cost of fuel mm. so like it becomes economical for like say like business people to like be like oh, I've got a meeting in Shanghai and I'm in New York and then you get there in like half an hour because you're going like you know ridiculously quick yeah but like I still think that that is stupid yeah, yeah you know? sure because yeah. like I don't want to you know do they strapped into a seat and then uh, just like yeah like, you know it's just like why don't you just sit in first class yeah for like 12 hours but you know maybe people really want to get in there real quick but and also like the noise and the you know yeah like there, there's a lot of inconveniences still with that <laughs> you know we're in Wellington with the airplanes taking off and they're pretty loud yep you know you probably hear them you probably like, hear them intermittently imagine like a rocket <laughs> <laughs> whoa <laughs> you yeah. know dust cloud covers yeah. the city yeah. so saying like oh no you just have it on the barge out to sea but it's like you know like so what you got on a boat for like three hours to get to a barge <laughs> <laughs> that then you launch or need to slingshot you out yeah. into the ocean yeah so I think like that's the thing about a lot of these ideas is like you know, they probably won't come happen quite they're, how you want them. They're, and they're still reasonably science fiction at yeah. this point. <laughs> but, but, but you appreciate someone trying, I guess. That's kind of what maybe it yeah. you know, was about. No, it's exciting times. Yeah. Right, well, we could probably talk about this for another three hours. If yeah, you we'll want. have to do a part two, three, four. My part two, yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'll... Um, and we can just go super niche. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh goody. <laughs> like, I guess so. I'll reward you at like episode 12 or something. Yeah. With another little hint. A little hint of me as well, <laughs> yeah. Oh, very um, good. Well, yeah, I think that about wraps it up. Um, well, I don't know if we really addressed the question, but you know. Ah, well, I mean, yeah. The fact is that NASA's NASA, still very important. Yeah, and it, yeah, has been for a number of years. It's just its role has changed a little bit. Yeah. Um, I think. Uh, or maybe it should. Our change. resident expert yeah. thinks. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, tune in next week, um, and we'll have something else fascinating to talk about. Yeah. All right. See ya. Peace.